Hello, this is Compound Interest Stock Guy. Today in this video, we're going to be talking about companies that are too overvalued uh, based on uh, financial metrics. Uh, this would be without the cash positions uh, in the biggest and the baddest companies in the whole cannabis space. So stay tuned. Uh, we're going to be talking about Afria. We're going to be talking about ACB. We're going to be talking about CGC, Tilray, and uh, you know, just going to be short and precise down to the legitness all right uh, I also want to disclose I'm not a financial advisor this is just for entertainment information purposes do not buy or sell based on anything I talk about buy or sell after you did your own research due diligence and you like the investments you're pursuing okay uh, so I'm um, just drinking some coffee um, this uh, video is sponsored by McDonald's Arabica so uh, yeah I know uh, LCI is a stock to watch for. Uh, it's trading around 975. I think if it gets to oh, 1025, I think at that certain point, um, you can see a lot of buying pressure coming in, even like 1010, 10, 1015. Uh, it's a cocaine nasal spray uh, company, so I'm going to watch that. I just wanted to share that. Uh, again, uh, it's not. Uh, it's not saying I'm not saying as a buy buy for like long term. I'm just saying like for momentum, uh, it could potentially go to fifteen to twenty five dollars in a very short amount of time. So if you could pick up a fifty to one hundred percent, one hundred fifty percent gain on it, um, you know, check it out. And uh, okay, so let's get into this uh, ACB, ACB, the crowd pleaser. What everybody wants to hear about. You know, on all YouTube tube. nobody wants to hear about palladium nobody wants to hear about rhodium but uh, those two metals have gone up like three or four times uh, for palladium in the last like three years and uh, rhodium's gone up about nine times but nobody wants to talk about rhodium I, I did a video about two years ago <laughs> nobody watched it but they'll watch a, a video about Aurora if it's just got it in the title so uh, anyways, I'm just, just going to get down to the nitty gritty. Uh, ACB is about a $3 billion market cap. And, uh, you know, the financial metrics on uh, Wall Street, they want about a 30 to about 100 PE ratio. So I think at about a 50 PE ratio, they would be considered, uh, you know, valued pretty decent, um, not too expensive. So I think if... Uh, they were able to do about 60 million in net income for the year based on their current um, valuation. That would put them around a 50 PE. I think that would be justified for the market. Um, would it go a lot higher um, when when they do do 60 million? Probably. It'd probably be about a $10 stock at that point. Um, but yeah, that's just the point. That's the market. It it needs to sell about. 750 to a billion dollars in sales and then do about 60 to 100 million in in net income a year to to uh you know be be uh valued correctly uh what wall street likes now into uh afria afria would uh it's about a two billion market cap so they would like to see about a 500 to a 600 million um in revenues and uh two billion I'd say about 40 to like 70 million net income uh, with with operational excellence, you know, um, you know, having free cash flow. So that's kind of uh, what what uh, the Wall Street would like to see. Now, it, when that happens, if they do like 50 to 100 million in net income, um, probably the share price would be a lot higher at that point. But that is what uh, the Wall Street likes to see in these companies. I mean, I've been watching companies like Netflix, like uh, you look at like Tesla, Tesla's running at a very high PE ratio. So I mean, yeah, absolutely could be be similar stance. I mean, uh, you know, Tesla, they're like about a $100 billion market cap, but they, they're um, on a run rate about six 600 million a year. So that's like 150 PE ratio. So uh, just getting it down to the nitty gritty, but I do think uh, Tesla is overvalued. I do think that Tesla should be be back down to about like 200 to 250. Uh, that would put them more in line with uh, what Wall Street would like to see. I think now with uh, CGC, CGC is about a 12 billion dollar market cap. So uh, with CGC, uh, Wall Street would like to see about two to to three billion dollars in revenues a year. 
I think that's that's pretty precise. And then it would also for a 12 billion, 60, I, you know, I think at least 150 to 200 million in net income a year, 200 million would be a 60 PE uh, based on their, uh, like they got the cash on hand. So yeah, I think for sure they would wanna see them be about like 150 to 200 million net income a year so that's uh what david klein has in store for him uh, you know if uh he wants to uh impress wall street so that's what the the wall street would like to see uh now with uh tilray tilray is at about a 2.3 billion market cap you know i think they would uh wall street would like to see about a 600 million in revenues and then uh 25 yeah, about 50, 50 million, 50 million or so uh, in net income a year. Um, yeah, 50 million. I think that would be pretty, pretty close to what the Wall Street would like to see them. Um, but when they do get that, they would be higher than what their price is, like around 21 bucks US. Uh, now with the revenues, that those are all in USD because uh, the share price is, is based in USD. So uh, with Tilray. Um, now with Crone, uh, Cron. Uh, you know, I think that Wall Street would like to see because uh, Cron's worth about three billion. So I think the Wall Street would like to see about you know three hundred to five hundred million in revenues and uh, you know anywhere from like fifty to a hundred million in net income. I think would would justify the street. I think they would be very happy with that. Um, I think the share price would be a lot higher at that point. Uh, there are they gonna do that in 2020? No, I don't think so. I'm, I'm thinking maybe a uh, hundred hundred and fifty million um, They're doing pretty good with the vape sales. I know that uh, watching on the BC cannabis store um, So yeah, and they also sell the battery packs from Cove as well as spinach, so That's what the street likes to see um, Yeah, I'm just watching palladium now that I, I got that all that done, I got I got another four or five minutes to go, so I'm just gonna share what I have to say about things. Uh, you know, get down to the nitty gritty on ACB, CGC, Cron, Tilray, Afria, the big dogs in the in the cannabis space. Um, I mean, I don't think I was really missing out on anybody. I mean, I mean, sure you can talk about IPR. Um, there's there's a few others that, but they're not really at the same type of levels in Canadian, um, you know, on the NYSC. So that's that's the nitty gritty. You're not gonna find that information anywhere else on uh, YouTube, but uh, you know, I'm a math guy, so I give it to you raw. And uh, yeah, you're welcome. But uh, let's get down to uh, palladium and uh, rhodium. Rhodium's up uh, to $9,100 US. Um, yeah, that's why I have Nilsey in my portfolio because um, I'm leveraged towards, uh, you know, platinum group metals that uh, could explode in price, which they've been doing for the last like 24 months, 36 months with platinum and rhodium. And, uh, you know, they're going to produce a nice, nice net income come their next financials. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, it would be interesting to watch them. Uh, you know, even gold players, if, if gold starts coming up to $1,600, I would recommend looking into Kirkland Lake Gold, looking to Barrick Gold, um, just the big ones. I want you guys in the safest companies because, you know, if you got a job, if you like don't like volatility, you know, that's going to make you feel like happy inside, you know, you're not stressing overnight when the stock goes down 20%, 30% in the night. So. When you own companies like Barrick Gold or you know Kirkland Lake Gold, they're not gonna just like drop like a like a hat. So those are the big companies. Uh, there's, a, there's a guy I know from Facebook. I don't know if he wants me to say his name, so I'm not gonna say his name. But he was telling me about Sabanier Gold (SBGL). So they, uh, you know, they're they're in Platinum Group as well as well as being a gold. Um, uh, he thinks they're gonna do pretty good. I I haven't done an enormous amount of research on Sabanier Gold. I was trying to look them up and trying to figure out information, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, it kind of got a little confusing for me. I mean, it took a long time to to tackle Nilsey. I'll tell you straight up, you know, to feel comfortable buying that. So I mean, don't rush into it. But 
Um, you know, I think that some companies such as like uh, Freeport McMoran, uh, FCX can do uh, very well. If uh, copper copper went down tonight, so it was at about like 275 um, a pound. So, you know, it, uh, it really needs to trend upwards to go to like 285, 290. You can be the best company in the space, but if the commodity price or just the market or the industry is not very good, then the price isn't going to do very good in the future. So that's the really the reality of things. Um, but yeah, FCX for copper. I think for silver players to look into, I think uh, First Majestic um, could be a good one. I think Fortuna uh, Silver, uh, FEI, FRAG, uh, based on TSX or NASDAQ uh, for First Majestic. Um, Pan American Silver, PAAS, could be a very good one. They have a lot of silver. So, um, you know, that's just some uh, information to give you guys and girls uh, about the markets, uh, a broad spectrum of companies that I'm um, sharing um, intel on that, uh, you know, scooped up from uh, this here. Anyways, uh, keep compounding your info, listen to my lingo, and uh, shaka, ka, peace, I'm out. So, yeah, the market's going to be wild. Just, uh, you know, watch investing.com if you're playing the commodities and check the metals, um, whether it goes up and down. And then, um, you know, just just be careful. Like, you can scale into positions as well. But, uh, yeah, that's a wrap. Good peace. I'm out.